should buy a video game. Let's go thrifting. Ah, yes, it's time to check on construction. My favorite Goodwill is getting expanded still. And look at this, you can go inside now and actually see inside of the building, such as it is. I mean, it's coming along, but uh, I'd say there's a little bit more in the decor area to go. Over in the glass cases, we have a bunch of games for the GameCube and some for the 360. All stuff that I already have or just don't have an interest in. But over by the media towers, it's another story entirely. Digging through here, I happen to run across quite a few goodies. Beyblade for the PlayStation 1. Some game called The Final Round. It's a golf game by Konami. Interesting. Cabela's Outdoor Adventures, kind of a sucker for these games. True Crime Streets of LA. Devil May Cry, the first one for the PS2. Some game called Mojo, the exclamation point, and Gran Turismo 3 A spec. A few things over in the loose CDs over here. It's a complete version of Cabela's Big Game Hunter. This is pretty cool. It's an open world hunting game for the PS1. Also found a copy of NASCAR Heat 2002 for the PS2. Ooh, this is quite an intriguingly rusty trunk. I wonder what's inside. <gasps> Nothing. I don't know how anyone's supposed to get to the bottom of this pile of toys, but on the top, at least, there was one of these grabby handle things that only seemed to grab once and would not grab anymore. That's sad. Always looking through the puzzles and board games, and hey, struck gold today, Jack Nicholas's unlimited golf and course designed by Accolade for DOS. Rummaging through the electronics, I happen to find this TV that's just kind of captivating in its shape. I don't know, I really like it, but uh, I I've just got no use for it, and it's kind of bulky, but it looks cool. And mixed in amongst the junk that genuinely nobody wants, I found something a lot of people would want. This is a 4-Switch Atari 2600 Woody. Uh, this is pretty cool. For 15 bucks, it's not bad. Unfortunately, I have a ton of these already, and there was no AC adapter to even test to see if it worked. But really, that's pretty cool to find in Goodwill, and it's not in an auction case. As I was passing by the LPs, I saw this in the corner, which interested me because uh, early 70s Chevys. Uh, this is apparently some kind of promotional album by Chevrolet. Uh, it's got a bunch of random artists and stuff, but yeah, mmm, lovely muscle on the back. I know some collectors would be into this. These are 1980 LA Olympic Coke bottles. Three bucks each, I don't know if it was a good deal or not, but it was pretty cool to see them though. And something that just always catches my eye, this is a little model train set. I, I've just always liked model trains, and trains in general. This one was kind of cool and cheap. Never mind, it actually kind of looks like crap, but whatever. On to the Salvation Army, because, yeah, I don't know, I had a feeling today. And hey, 50% off red tags, plus a bunch of other things and stuff. Cool, I like sales. Checking out their glass case, found a couple PS1 games of interest. Tycho RC Assault with a Battery, as well as a game called Roscoe McQueen Firefighter Extreme. They also had a bin full of games once again, and there were some PS1 games in here like Mary Kate and Ashley Crush Course. He doesn't even know I'm alive, but he's so cute. This has got to be covered. Hmm, stay tuned. And a boxing game that kind of sucks actually called Contender. And below, there were two big box PC games, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2000, as well as Shogun Total War. Nice to have for a buck a piece. Over in the electronics, I actually found something here this time. These are double density, double sided, five and a quarter inch floppies, still sealed. Man, I can make use of these. You don't see this particular format of floppy very often. And hey, a nice reel to reel tape recorder. A bit too bulky to get, but it's always kind of nice and nostalgic to see since I started off doing my uh, sort of creative show and whatnot on one of these way back in the day. They actually made a board game of Where's My Water? And hey, I've got a raging Clue. This is the VCR mystery game for Clue. I have a strange affinity for these things. I don't really know why. It's just odd. And I already have Clue 2. The VCR mystery game comes in a very similar box, so it's nice to have the set. I'd kind of like to cover one of these on my channel sometime. It's just a little different. That's about it for that store. On to yet another Goodwill. Disposing of refuse responsibly, baby. Just past this reflection of my crotch, I happen to find this little electronic doodad. It's a leapster kids thingy, and oh, oh no, I'm getting sleepy. I'm getting weird. Checking out the rest of the electronics, because you never know what you'll find. I did find this. 
Ooh, lordy, it's a royal typewriter. I like these green keys and the fact that it's so frickin' old looking. Happened to find a PS1 and I always check the back of these and, and here's why. This is one of those with the analog outputs right on the back. You don't actually need the AV multi-out cable. I already have a couple of these or I would have gotten it, but still, it's nice to see these every so often. I'm kinda kicking myself for not getting it anyway. Over in the puzzles and games, I happen to find a Lego set. Ooh, yes, and these are kind of costly. This is the Temple of Mount Everest. You're gonna pay 40 to $60 for this thing online, and here it is for 50 cents. I just like building these anyway. And as I was walking around that same area, I happened to notice a guy putting down a ton of LPs on the floor. And you know, you kind of have to get these right as they come out because people pick through them so quickly, like I did. I got first dibs on all of these. And for a dollar each, uh, yeah, I'd say I got a pretty good deal. There's a lot of interesting, pretty good music in here too. A lot of stuff I've been either wanting for a while or was just curious about, and it was such a good deal anyway. Media section had some good stuff too. Uh, Super Trucks Racing. Yeah, it's the same game I was wanting from another Goodwill a while back, and this one actually has the disc inside. Yay! Also a copy of 007 Everything or Nothing, as well as 007 Agent Under Fire. A greatest hits copy of Tekken 4. Love me some Tekken. Around the corner, I happen to find a copy of Mafia, the first one for the PS2, as well as a copy of Hot Wheels Stunt Track Challenge for the PS2. Uh, just a bunch of PS2 games in here, as uh, another thing. Medal of Honor, Rising Sun, as well as Supercar, Street Challenge, this is a game I always wanted. A complete copy of Manhunt 2 for the PS2, that's a pretty cool find actually. As well as, yeah, even more up here, some game called The Plan? I have no idea anything about this. It's by Crave, so I don't have high hopes. Motocross Mania 3, <laughs> I know the first one's good, but I don't think this one is actually, from what I remember. And some game called Mountain Bike Adrenaline. Looks pretty extreme, if you ask me. Not necessarily a good thing. And down below, there's even more. Uh, Professional Drag Racing 2005 by Bethesda. Yes, Bethesda. They made drag racing games for the IHRA back in the day. Mark Echo's Getting Up, Contents Under Pressure. I, uh, yeah, I don't think this is any good. This game was sold in the grocery store anyway, according to the stickers, so, <laughs> I don't know. And King of Fighters 11. Pretty sweet little SNK game. I like the King of Fighters games anyway, and this was a good one. And as I was about to leave, I saw this out of the corner of my eye. These shelves scattered with sealed Hot Wheels cars. And I'm a fan of collecting these, especially the 90s cars. These are some 90s first editions, like the Go-Kart here, as well as the Three Window 34, new paint style, a 97 first edition yellow Lamborghini Countach, and Split and Image 2. Since I was feeling lucky, I decided to hit up another Goodwill. This is one I have not been to yet on LGR Thrifts. Yes, there's still more around me. It's kind of ridiculous how many there are. I recently realized that there's 10 in a reasonable driving distance. In the glass case, not much of interest to me. There was this Princess Diana commemorative doll from 1997. Certainly nothing I've ever seen before. It was going for $100. Over in the media, though, uh... Yeah, I saw, I think, a grand total of one game in here. And the electronics, it's electric trick or trick or trick or I don't know, there's, just, there's not much to choose from, but I did happen to find this IBM Wheel Rider Series 11. Mainly just attracted to this because of the design, and mm, it's got one of those nice IBM clicky style keyboards. It feels really good to type on. And the rest of the store is pretty much just a usual swath of junk and randomness. Completely struck out at this store, but it's not all for naught. In this area, there was a roses store. Now, I find these fascinating because they're not only just a discount store that sells all sorts of random stuff, but I used to go to one of these as a kid all the freaking time. I mean, I got school supplies here, toys and food and clothing and even little electronics here and there. And yeah, they do have an electronic section. <laughs> it's one of those though that sells like portable AM FM radios and maybe some headphones. Yeah, they have some TVs and stuff too, but you know, whatever. They're like 720p weird things. Back in the day though, I remember there being a discount video game section. You used to find a bunch of stuff that was either pre-owned or like publisher clearance kind of things or weird re-releases for very cheap. And you know, they still have all of that in here. You want a copy of Deadliest Warrior Ancient Combat for the 360? Well, holy crap, these guys have got you covered. 
a ton of stuff in here for the Nintendo DS, PC, PS2, PS3, Xbox 360. While there was a lot of stuff in here for really cheap, most of this was pre-owned it looks like. So it ranged anywhere from $10 to $20 for each of them, and not exactly the best deals in the world. But I did find a few PC games, brand new, Need for Speed, Pro Street, Star Trek DAC, as well as Battlefield 1942. These were actually a dollar each, not three dollars each, so that's awesome. But yeah, just the rest of this store. There's just something about the atmosphere. It's weird and kind of bleak. I don't know. Everything just seems off. The atmosphere is just weird. Oh, hey, cheap Twix. These go great with that slight aftertaste of retail despair. I always like to check out the toys section too, because again, it's just kind of surreal. Everything here is like off-brand and weird and no-name stuff. A lot of really cheap Chinese things and I don't know, man, I had a bunch of these as a kid, so it's nostalgic. <laughs> like this guy, super military set. This has to be the ugliest freaking action figure I've ever seen in my life. It's so poorly made, so cheap. The paint is all wrong, the shape is... what? The proportions don't make any sense, he doesn't barely stand up. <laughs> I love this guy, he is now my mascot. That is just the way it is, Rose's Man. And here is the total for Episode 9 of LGR Thrifts. Today we got 35 video games, one VCR board game, one Lego set, appears to be complete, four sealed 1990s Hot Wheels cars, 30 records, one box of new five and a quarter inch double density floppy disks, one bag of fun sized Twix bars, and one of the most hideous action figures ever conceived. I love that guy. And at a grand total of about $96 overall, which is not bad considering the Lego set alone would cost me at least half that. Not to mention all the PS2 games and the LPs and Mary Kate and Ashley Crush Course. Uh, yeah, bunch of stuff that would have cost me way more. So not only did I get a good deal, I got a bunch of stuff that I was wanting. A bunch of cool music, some Twix bars to eat. <laughs> Oh, and that Roscoe McQueen game, it was missing the manual, but I happened to find one on eBay for a dollar, so that's awesome. It is now a complete specimen. Normally I can't stand to go without manuals, but this is just such an odd game for a super cheap price, so I'm like, yeah, okay. And man, all these PS2 games, I just keep finding so many of them recently, as well as the PS1. I'm kind of starting to get a pretty sizable collection for both of those systems. And that's all for my finds, but of course, I am not the only one thrifting anymore. Well, not to say I was the only one. A lot of y'all have been sending in the pictures of your hauls as you've gone out thrifting inspired by this show. It's pretty incredible what you can still find out there in the wild if you just go and look. And yes, I hope as my visit to the One Goodwill showed, sometimes all you find are bowling pins that people have written on. Seriously, don't give up. There's always stuff to find out there. You just gotta go uh, frequently as well as finding more places to go and check out. There may be more thrift stores in your area than you even realize. Not all of them are Goodwill, so yeah, just check them out, see what you got. And if you enjoyed this episode of LGR Thrifts, then I've done a bunch more, and you can check them out on my channel, as well as stuff in the future. And there's going to be a lot of stuff in the future. I've already got the next episode of Thrifts ready to go, so yeah, that'll be up in a couple weeks, and if you would like to see it and be reminded that it exists, you can hit subscribe to do that. You can also check me out on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon to not only interact with me further, but help support the channel and my thrifting habits, which consequently means more content for you to watch. And as always, thank you for watching.